For this next exercise, what we're going to do is take a Revit file that has a topography in it, and we're going to essentially map a floor to that topography, make the floor follow the topography. This is something that architects have been asking for for quite some time, and Dynamo finally makes it possible. So I'm going to open up this Revit file that has a topography in it. And it also has a subregion on the topography, which is basically indicating where the road on this topography is going to go. It's as a subregion because it's a little bit easier to match it to the topography lines that way. But once we have this subregion, we can very easily create a floor that then we can use in Dynamo. And how I'm going to do that is I just simply edit the boundary of that subregion and we scroll down here and we're going to copy all of those lines to the clipboard by hitting control c and then just say okay and then we're going to start the floor command which is under architecture floor and it goes into the floor command but then i'm going to paste those sketch lines into this view except I'm probably going to have to go to level one in order to do it precisely. So I'm going to say paste by level and align by selected level and just paste it into level one. Now I can go back to the 3D view to take a look at it here. And there is the floor. And so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so that's the first step that you have to do. You have to have the topography and then you have to have a floor and then your floor is just flat and it can be at whatever level. It doesn't really matter. I'm also going to turn on the shade mode just so it can see it a little more clearly. So now we're going to go back into Dynamo and it's a very simple, straightforward definition to do this. So I'm going to click on new and I'm going to go ahead and maximize Dynamo. The first thing that we need to do is add a couple of select model element nodes. So we need two of these. So I add two of those. One, we're going to be selecting the subregion, and then the other, we're going to be selecting the floor or the roof. This will work with floors or roofs. So the first thing we're going to do is try to do a split screen here. So I hit select, and then I have to grab the subregion. Make sure you're grabbing the subregion, not the overall topography. And then after I do that, the element ID pops up right here. So grab the floor. Okay, so now we've got the subregion up here and we've got the floor here. So the subregion, what we need to do is pull the topography points that involve that subregion. And so that is a node called topography points. And so that gets plugged into the subregion. And a lot of times, this is a very simple definition, but if this was a more complicated situation, what I would typically do, just to kind of keep myself organized, is I would actually create a note. Because I have it set in automatic, it was actually running this node. So you can see in Revit the points that it's identifying now. But if this was a more complicated definition, what I would do is add a note. And you do that by hitting Control w And then here, I can click inside here, and I can say this is the subregion. And then I can do another note here and just mark this as floor. So you can add notes like this just to kind of remind yourself of what the various things are in the definition. I also add notes sometimes if I am doing something complicated and need to sort of describe for myself what I'm trying to accomplish. Because a lot of times you'll come back to a definition weeks later and not remember exactly how or why you did things a certain way. And the notes can help you clarify that. So in this case, the last node, it's just a four node definition, is actually coming from a package. And it's a package called Clockwork. Packages are collections of custom nodes that people out there in the world produce, and they can be downloaded into Dynamo by clicking Packages and then say Search for a Package. Go ahead and say Accept. And it's going to search for all of the packages that are out there, but the one that we're looking for specifically here is called Clockwork. And once I hit Enter, it should... Let's see, sort by name. Some of these packages reference other packages. That's why you get more hits than just what you're looking for. But it should sort through more than just what it is. Let me see if I can scroll down and find it here. Okay, here it is. So there's different versions of it. 
And the one that we're looking for, of course, is the 0 0.9, because that's what we're using. And to download any of these packages, you just hit the button here. I'm just gonna install the latest and hope that nothing goes wrong. We can always uninstall it if we have to. Depending on how many nodes it contains, it can be really quick download or it can take a minute or two. Okay, so it says that it's installed. Let's look over here. Yeah, it looks like it got everything in here now. So what I'm gonna do is search for what we're looking for through here. Let's see, slab I think is the key word. What I'm looking for is this guy right here. So floor slab shaped by points. So in this case, our points are coming from the topography and I'm actually gonna set this to manual. I don't want it to run as soon as I plug this in because it will run as soon as I plug it in if I don't have it set to manual. And then I plug this into there. And so let's do a little split screen here, kind of see what's gonna happen. So when I hit run, it will make the floor map to the topography. So what we did here is now this floor is mapped to the topography. But as you can see, the top surface of the floor is coplanar with the topography. So if you don't wanna see that, what you can do is just within Revit, you can click on that floor and then you can just raise it up slightly. So say two inches or something like that. And then it gets just slightly above the topography so that you don't have that weird patterning going on. But then what you're left with is all of these weird lines in the floor. But you can also get rid of that simply by going into visibility graphics in whatever view you happen to be in, floor plan or 3D view, and scroll down to floors and then turn off interior edges, and that gets rid of all of those lines. Now the lines that you're seeing there that are left, those are the topography lines, as you can see, that are crossing through. To turn those off, you would turn the topography lines off, but that gets you a road or a sidewalk or any flat surface, any hardscape like that, to follow whatever the topography is on your project.